Okay, um, we have a next speaker. His name is Carlos Glender, and he's going to speak on the analysis of sand on Mars to determine possible organic synthesis of sands. So let's give him a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Carlos Glender, and um, I've been, been in the Mars Society since 2002. I've been affiliated with the Ohio chapter, um, but uh, my wife and I recently moved to North Carolina, and we've been in the Charlotte area for about seven months. North Carolina doesn't have a, a state chapter, so uh, I'm also considering uh, starting a chapter in North Carolina. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, sand and sediment, the table of contents. And uh, everybody's heard, uh, probably has heard the great news, uh, the discovery of organic molecules on Mars. Uh, this is a uh, it was in the uh, Wired magazine and uh, you know all, all over the news. Uh, NASA Curiosity rover hit pay dirt on Mars, um, and organic mo molecules were found on Mars. Uh, just a little bit of background on uh, the different uh, media on Mars that they analyzed. They uh, analyzed sand, which consists uh, predominantly of loose particles on the surface. Um, they also an analyzed some sandstone, which is sedimentary rock consisting of sand, and also mudstone, which is really a sedimentary rock, but of much finer composition. Um, it has finer particles, a lot, uh, lot smaller, and uh, it's mostly uh, clay, some small sand, and also clay. Okay, um, on Earth, there's many different types of sand. Um, organic sand is found on beaches. It's composed mostly of carbon in the, in the form of calcium carbonate. And also you have uh, you know, your larger grained sand, your coarser sand, will even have evidence of, uh, of, of life of some fossils. And then a lot of your inorganic sands, which, can, which uh, make up a lot of your deserts, um, some are composed of silicon dioxide. Okay, uh, on Mars, uh, there was a lot of uh, water erosion features that show that water flowed in the past um, over millions of years. Um, some primitive aquatic life might have been created which could have uh, formed some organic sands. And then also on Mars, you have large-scale large, large scale sandstorms, which would result in mixing of sands, mixing some organic sand with inorganic sand. Okay, uh, basically sand particles, um, to, consider, to be considered sand, it uh, has a granule material with a particle size between 1 16th of a millimeter and 2 millimeters in diameter. Okay, uh, where sand accumulates in large quantities, it can, can be transformed into sedimentary rock, known as sandstone and mudstone. Um, during some of the plenary sp speeches uh, today, they talked about Gale Crater on how um, how uh, water formed in Gale Crater that could have been there over a million years. So that's a long time. And uh, during that time, some of the sand could have been compressed into sandstone and your finer grains into mudstone. Okay, uh, this is an image of sand grains on the surface of Mars. Uh, taken by the Curiosity rover. See, it's very uniform, the same composition. Looks, uh, looks very uniform, uh, the picture of the uh, sand on Mars. These are some of the types of sand found on Earth. Uh, on Earth, there's a very large variety of different types of sand. Um, you have, these are just two, 
two simple examples, but there are you know, hundreds of varieties. Um, a lot of it, um, your, your uh, mineral sand or basaltic or volcanic uh, could be on the, uh, could, would be indicated uh, over here by this, uh, this slide here. You have uh, grains of many different sizes and compositions. And then you have a, an organic sand or amina sand. And this is sand found off Australia. It has shapes that, that would indicate even at the granular level, level that uh, could be possibly caused by life. So you have inorganic sand, organic sand. And then um, as far as the analysis of sand and sediment on Mars, um, I'll just talk about the recent examples. I mean, it goes all the way back to Viking. But the recent examples um, done by Curiosity, um, the, uh, the first uh, analysis was done on sand at uh, Gale Craters um, at a place called the Rock Nest Sh Sand Shadow. Um, this was a sand shadow, um, a, uh, a place where wind would cause mixing of sand and um, they anal analyzed that, the sand under that sand shadow. They also uh, analyzed um, sedimentary rock at Yellowknife Bay. They found pairings of sulfates and sulfides, which would indicate a possible chemical energy source for microorganisms. And then the most exciting analysis was done uh, by Curiosity at uh, the Murray Formation at Power Rump Hills on Gale Crater. And that was where um, organic molecules were found. OK, um, looking at the analysis of the sand, um, what Curiosity did was they used a, the sample analysis at Mars instrument, or the SAM instrument, and they, uh, they, you had a sieve, before they analyzed it, they had a sieve that would uh, analyze your small sand grain particles, 150 microns or smaller. So that would take out all your larger grains. And all the sand that was found at that uh, formation was found to be uh, basaltic in composition. But, um, you know, further analysis indicated that the detection of organic molecules was really hampered by the presence of perchlorates and salt, not to mention ultraviolet radiation and ionizing cosmic rays, which at the surface would break down any organic molecules. So going all the way back to Viking, um, the, the sand that was analyzed uh, for organic molecules that was on the surface you know, all those conditions would uh, destroy the organic molecules. What Curiosity found um, at Power Romp Hills um, was some or, um, organic molecules in mudstone that was estimated to be 300 and, excuse me, 3.5 billion years old. Uh, the Curiosity drill penetrated uh, several centimeters into the mudstone and delivered the samples to the rover's oven where pyrolysis was conducted. And that yielded uh, complex organic macromolecules. These type of macromolecules are also found on Earth in uh, carbonaceous chondrites and kerogen and also coal. Okay, uh, they, they found that the discovery of this uh, ancient organic matter, um, that it's uh, the level of the fidelity you can get with analyzing this is determined by the degra degradation of the organic molecules and also the preservation mechanisms that are in place in the, uh, how it's shielded from the radiation and the perchlorates.
So ancient biomacromolecules deposited in a lake sediment may have transformed into geomacromolecules over time. So it's not definitive whether the organic molecules were biotically or abiotically produced. So uh, it's likely that better preserved molecular samples could be taken deeper below the surface. You know, going down um, several centimeters, which was done where they found organic molecules, um, could have possibly have better preserved organic molecules if you go down deeper because it's, you have more shielding from the, uh, from the uh, cosmic radiation and the perchlorates. Okay, this is basically a uh, analysis done on the different samples taken by Curiosity. And it shows the chemical content. Um, Curiosity's been uh, traveling at different locations and, um, you know, uh, the latest find um, is probably the most exciting as far as organic molecules. But it shows the, the different chemical compositions taken at different locations. Okay, uh, plan future missions to Mars to really uh, to get better fidelity on um, the organic molecules. Um, you have two primary ones. You have uh, the, the ESA's uh, ExoMars rover. That's scheduled to launch in uh, July of 2020. And it would have the capability to drill down and obtain samples up to two meters in depth. So uh, you go a lot deeper and uh, with the idea being that um, those, uh, those deeper samples would be better preserved and the molecules would, would yield more analysis on whether they're biotically or, or abiotically produced. Hoping that they're biotically produced. And then uh, also we have the, the, excuse me, the NASA Mars 2020 rover. That's scheduled to launch in uh, July of 2020, same time as uh, ESA's ExoMars. And it would have the capability to ex extract uh, core rock samples for subsequent to return missions to, to the Earth. Um, those aren't really uh, funded at this time or planned how they're going to get them back or when to get them back. But um, the, uh, the Mars 2020 rover is uh, designed to take samples with the idea that they will figure out how to get them back. And I talked with uh, Carol Stoker after her brief, and she said that uh, she was concerned about backwards contamination. Um, she said that the procedures uh, for the, re the, the return of these samples from Mars 2020 would be done under very strict protocol that would prevent any um, backward contamination. Um, the main concern of backward contamination would be sending uh, any humans to Mars, because uh, humans are com comprised of, uh, you know, we're actually a biome our, in, our, in our own right. Each individual is a biosphere. And uh, bringing humans back from Mars would be much more difficult. But um, bringing, uh, bringing samples back from Mars would be, un you know, like I said, under very strict protocol. And there'd be, very, there'd be uh, virtually no chance of backward contamination. Okay, this is a picture of the ExoMars uh, rover. It's uh, planned to land, it'll, it'll launch in July of 2020, but it's planned to land on, uh, on Mars in March of 2021. Um, they're looking at different landing sites. ESA is looking at uh, two potential sites, one being uh, Oxia Planum, with a second site still to be determined uh, between uh, Aram Dorsum and um, Maram Vallis. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing those right, by the way. Then uh, the Mars 2020 rover, that's planned to land on Mars uh, earlier than uh, the Exo, Exo Mars. That's planned to land in uh, February of 2021. The landing sites planned um, right now is uh, NASA's looking at three potential sites. 
Columbia Hills, Jezero Crato, and any Assertus. Just to summarize, um, you know, in June they uh, announced the discovery of organic um, macromolecules by Curiosity. Um, organic um, molecules are not necessarily produced by living organisms. They can also be produced by, um, by comets, asteroids, and also by the planet itself, or abiotically. Okay, the landing sites for both uh, future rovers, ExoMars and Mars 2020, are being planned. But they're looking at sites that uh, all sites mentioned um, are potential sites where ancient Martian water once flowed. And there is a potential to find, um, find organic molecules. And um, both rovers, the ones uh, launched by NASA and ESA, would have a greater capability than Curiosity. And um, that they both have different methods on how they would um, you know, find better samples so we could analyze it better and get to the true origin of these organic molecules. Okay, uh, these are some of the references. Um, I'm uh, also, these, this, this is just kind of an overview. I'm also working uh, with the college that, that, that I'm teaching at. I'm teaching at Central Piedmont Community College. And I uh, touch base with their uh, research department, specifically their chemistry department, to, uh, to produce a paper that goes into the, this, these concepts, but in much greater detail. Okay. Uh, Okay, it's open for any questions. A question over here. Yeah, ExoMars. The deeper you go, probably the better you'd get samples. But ExoMars is designed to go two meters, which is, which is much greater than the several centimeters that Curiosity did. But right now, uh, you know, ExoMars is designed to go two meters. And that's, the sample should be better, but ideally, you'd go deeper. Yeah, the sand samples taken did not indicate any of that. But, you know, uh, Mars is the entire planet, and, and um, you know, the samples that they were taking, you know, the sand samples, they used a sieve, which uh, got a lot of your larger grains out. That may have played a role in, in it, but um, it, I think it definitely bears looking into deeper. Yes, um, particularly the NASA's 2020. Um, you know, the idea of bringing the samples to Earth is that, um, you know, bring those samples to Earth would have, you know, bring it to a la Earth laboratory would uh, produce much, much better analysis than uh, what's available on even the best rover. You, know, you could analyze it, you know, in many different ways other than just, you know, pyrolysis. That's true. Uh, are the clays, because I saw in your samples there are quite a quantity of clay there. Uh, have we gotten into any of those clay layers, any of our testing? Well, uh, the organic molecules were found in mudstone, which is comprised of, comprised of clay, compressed clay. Um, as far as I know, no, uh, 
no analysis was done of just clay other than sedimentary clay. But, I mean, there's, there's really no, not much water. I mean, I, I'm not sure, to be honest. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you.